Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zane and we are going to be looking at problem number two of Leet Code, which is adding two linked lists together, the numbers contained by two linked lists. If you haven't watched my video on linked lists, I'd highly recommend you do that because that will be very important for this video and there's some good information in there. It would be very difficult to follow this, follow this unless you understand this linked list code. So. Um, it gives you two linked lists, and so it'll have a node like two, four, three, and that's sort of in backwards order from the actual order of the number. And so it's from in order from least significant to most significant digits. So if we were to add these two linked lists together, we would have two plus five equals seven, and two four plus six equals ten. So we'd carry the one, and four plus four equals eight. And so we're going to return another linked list with the added value of the two numbers. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm using my two list function to turn this vector into a linked list. So we're passing in 2, 4, 3, 5, 4, 6, just like over here. And we should get back a linked list of 708. And we have our list type right here, and that's just option box list node. So let's get started. <clears throat> Well, first thing let's do is just cycle through one of the lists and just print it out to the console. We're going to need return an option type, so we'll just go ahead and return none. And then we'll say while... So we're going to need a mutable, refer a mutable reference to the list one. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll say while l is sum and we'll just print that out. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to assign the next node to L1 and then the next node and the next node until until it's a none and then we'll know that we're at the end of the list because the next will be none whenever we're at the end. So we'll print this out. Um, we'll need we'll print out the value. So we'll say L1 and we'll have to get a reference to that and unwrap it and then we'll get the value and so that should print to the console but now we need to get the next node and assign that to l1 so we'll say l1 equals that l1 dot as ref dot unwrap dot next and so that should print out each each uh, the value for each node in that first linked list. So it should say two, four, three. Let's see what's wrong here. Um, so this is move. So I guess we'll actually need a reference to that. Um, and so that should work. So now it's printing out two, four, three because we moved. Because we're using this here, what that was saying is that um, we can't move it into the scope. So we have to keep it in this scope. So we have to j basically we just have to use a reference. Okay, so now we need to actually print. We need to add these together. So how we can do that is we can we can get the actual node from the list. So we'll just by using our, um, we get the, so we're basically converting the this option into, to get the actual node. So we'll get that from the node, from, uh, we'll get the node from the L1. And so now we get, we don't have to have all this stuff anymore because we're actually getting the value. So this will actually be the list node. So we can say, We'll, ha we'll have the sum variable, and that will just equal zero, and then we'll add the value from L1 and then the value from L2, and that will give us the sum of both. And then we'll need a carry as well. Uh, we'll add that in a second. So we'll say L1 or node.val, and we'll add that to the sum. And so that will add the value. And then we will 
um, set L1 equal to the next node, so node dot next. And I think, I guess we'll need a reference. This will need to be a reference so that it matches that type. Okay, and we'll just do the same thing here. So if let some, you know, well, we can just copy this code. There's no reason to write all that out. And then just change that to two. And then, so we'll, now we'll need a carry. So we'll need to add the carry for the next one. So we'll say mute carry equals zero. And we'll actually need, we'll be needing to cycle through each one of these. So we'll say if what L1 is sum or L2 is sum, or if carry is not equal to zero, because we'll need to add a node if there's any carry left over at the end of the list. Okay, what's this saying? So we need a, we have to add this too for the L2. Okay, so now this should be successfully cycling through all of them and adding the sum. So now we need to actually create a list. So, but for the first list, so, so we're basically going to say, assign the value to the current node and then uh, the, we will say for the next node, we'll um, assign that to cur and then we'll assign the values for that. So essentially if you don't understand what I'm saying. So what we'll need though is we'll need a starting node, but we won't know the first value for this. So this is gonna start with a carry too, by the way. But So we'll need the first node for the list, but we won't know the first value until we get through this code. So we're just gonna create like a sort of dummy node and this will just be a list node and just with a we can put any value in here I'll just put zero and then we'll set cur equal to that dummy to a reference to that dummy node okay and so then we'll be able to change whatever cur cur is because we'll have a mutable reference to it and so for the first, so whenever we're cycling through the first time, carry will be zero and we'll get the sum. And so we'll, we'll set the cur dot next, which cur is just this dummy node at first. And that we'll set that equal to the new node. So we'll create a new list node in a box and we'll set that equal. So we'll just need the remainder divided by 10 for the, for the um, actual value in here. And then the carry will actually be um, the sum divided by 10 and that will, so if it's over 10, then it will just be one and we'll have that carry for the next cycle through. And we need to set that to new. Let me change that to new. Um, okay, so, and then we need to actually set cur equal to um, that next node. So we'll set cur.next and we'll need to um, get a mutable reference to that because we have like a mutable reference so we can change it because we're going to be changing the next of this next one we're doing in the next loop. And so, and we also need to unwrap that. So get the actual unboxed uh, or unwrap the sum value and so that should work but we also need to make that a reference so that should cycle through everything let's see what's going wrong here oh I just did miss a semicolon I come from JavaScript so let's see what's wrong with this type differs in oh so this needs to be a mutable you can see we as we had a mutable there and then we actually need to return uh, the dummy dot next because this is just the dummy node and so the next one from that will be the start of the list let's see what's wrong now uh, creates a temporary value freed while still in use so okay so this actually is returning a mutable reference so we don't need that that ampersand mute that we had up here so this, the as mute essentially 
does this part for us and it actually gets the a reference immutable reference from that option so this should work now and you can see I actually already did it and it did so um, yeah so that's that problem so as far as optimizations instead of creating this node here we could maybe set this to may just have a result here and set that equal to none and then have the have cur be a reference to the result a mutable reference and then we could just update the update the uh, pointer to or update the value that cur is pointing to and then set cur equal to the next one so we could just go in here and we could actually get so since we're starting with the first value the first actual value and we're going to actually be returning the result here we could just dereference this and say that the value it's pointing to is equal to that and then we set and then we set cur equal to the next um, Oops. And so then we can just basically take this stuff, put it back here, and that should give us the immutable reference. Actually, and then we can just make this immutable reference. So that should work. So that works too. And then we don't create that new node that we're not even using. So that's a little more efficient. So let's look at what other people did just compare our own code so i'll just search for the rest problems or the rest solution so this is four milliseconds here zero that's not bad we should see how fast ours is too so this is pretty similar to what we did so he's yeah he's um cycling through all these and He's using a match right here for the sum and he's checking the sum. So this basically does everything that we did. So he's sort of doing it a little more uh, strangely, I would say. <laughs> but I think ours is probably more readable to me here than trying to read that. And if you have to add more variables that you're wanting to add more lists, this isn't really scalable because then you just have to keep on adding and it's basically a exponentially higher number of things that you have to have so i wouldn't use this code just for that reason but everything else looks pretty good here i think um so he's checking if it's none and so he does multiple checks to see if he's in this. so let's just see how fast ours is by the way i haven't actually tested this let's see how fast it was so oh and we'll actually need this list because I made that so we'll copy this over here see how fast we are I guess I I guess my last score was four milliseconds okay so we're zero milliseconds and we're faster than 100% of submissions and this is a pretty popular problem so I mean just because it's the second problem and we use two megabytes. So I think we probably have the best solution probably of anyone, <laughs> of anyone in the, uh, who solved it with Rust. So that's not bad. 100%, 100%, you can't complain about that. All right. So let's see what, let's look at some other people's pro solutions, some other 0%. So I think ours is probably the best solution. Um, yeah, so that guy is, I mean, this is all pretty much the same stuff that we did. This guy kind of, I think he's adding a little too much complication with this self unwrap here. I mean, I guess it's kind of necessary for the way he's doing it, but so he's returning the value and the actual node through here. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of difference here. I, th I think we did probably, we did pretty well though. So, okay. I'm not gonna, there's nothing glaringly obviously that's gonna make me change that stuff. 
So all right, so our next problem, we'll be doing number three, longest substring with re without repeating characters.